All right, so we are just a few minutes past the hour. Um, thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to join us. My name is Andrew Abad. I serve as the Assistant Director of Admissions for the MSU Honors College. I'm very happy to be joined by three of our students so far. Maybe one more uh, will pop in in a few minutes. But we will uh, collectively tell you a little bit about our program. I'll start with just a very brief overview. And then we will have some time at the end for questions. I know that um, there were two academic college sessions earlier today, so perhaps you were able to attend those. Um, hopefully they were helpful if you did, um, but we are very happy to tell you a little bit about the Honors College, and uh, hopefully if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can throw them in the chat. We use the chat function to um, field our questions and sort of do our Q&A, so um, let me go ahead and get started with the presentation, and again, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Um, but as soon as I'm done, we'll go ahead and introduce our students. So the MSU Honors College is one of the oldest programs in the country. We're uh, at the present time over 60 years old, but we think we're uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, certainly the oldest in our state. But we, uh, for a long time, have really allowed high achieving students to approach their studies at Michigan State a little bit differently. And I think the big draw for students is really the ability to come into the university with multiple interests uh, and really personalize and individualize their time at MSU. So really from the beginning, we open it up very wide academically to where you can choose from any one or more of the 240 academic programs offered by the university. So we have no real restrictions as to what you can or cannot study at MSU and many of our students are within the STEM fields, but also across many majors and disciplines. We have about 20% of our students who will either dual major or dual degree at MSU. So it's not uncommon at all to have students with multiple interests uh, come to MSU within the Honors College and have the ability to tie those together. We allow students to really design their own curriculum specifically in the first couple of years. So when we talk about the integrative studies program, you may have heard that. Uh, some colleges will call it gen ed, general education, you'll have the ability to take a certain number of classes in a wide variety of fields and our students are able to approach that a bit differently. First of all, we allow you to waive most prerequisites. So instead of taking a lot of the entry level courses, you have the ability to take upper level or major specific courses. And then we also allow you to make course substitutions in certain areas to really tailor uh, your classes to your interest a little bit closer. So we try and work with you very closely throughout your time. Um, most of our students will graduate in four years. We'll talk a little bit about what's required from the Honors College in a second, but we have a lot of opportunity for you to really individualize and personalize the work that you do within the university's framework. We have what's called Honors Experiences. This is the way that you get Honors credit at the university. Um, for those of you who are taking advanced coursework right now in high school, whether that's AP, International Baccalaureate, dual enrollment, um, those are very similar to our honors courses that you'll see in the catalog designated with an H. So we have these smaller classes taught by faculty that are going to be a little bit in depth and accelerated more than an average class would be. But we also give you an opportunity to do something different as well. Um, we have what's called the honors option, which is where you would take an existing MSU class that is not already an honors class and do a little bit of extra work with the faculty's approval um, to achieve that honors credit. So in this way, we give you really a, even more flexibility to not only decide what classes you wanna take, but also where you want to do your honors work throughout your schedule and throughout your career as an undergraduate. Some of you may be bringing in a lot of credit. The average student that comes into the honors college brings in more or less about 20 college credits through as I mentioned, APIB dual enrollment coursework. Um, you may decide that you wanna start taking graduate level courses as an undergraduate. And we have a few students that do that. Um, one of the great perks about being in the Honors College is we give you up to nine hours of graduate level coursework and we allow you to pay the undergraduate costs. So it's at no cost to you or no additional cost to you to take these grad level courses. And they are uh, already pretty challenging. So we don't make you do any extra work in those classes. They'll automatically count for honors credit. Uh, if you do research on our campus, you might do a senior project or a thesis. You'll work directly with faculty in that case for course credit. 
those can count as honors experiences as well. But the general rule is that we require three of these honors experiences by the end of your fourth semester. So that's the end of your second year. And then eight of these honors experiences by the time that you graduate. So those are the minimums. That's basically the way that the curriculum is structured, but you have full control over how many honors courses you take per semester, which classes you take for honors credit, and ultimately when and where you take honors credit throughout your career. So again, a lot of flexibility, a lot of autonomy on your end as a high achieving student. We have a great team of advisors that work very closely with you to bring your interests together. So you'll have the ability to meet with them and, and they work with you broadly, I would say even more than the colleges would. They know the college requirements, but they can talk to you about other things too, like education abroad or doing research or connecting you with different opportunities across campus. Um, in addition to that advisor within the Honors College, you'll also have a Honors Advisor within your major who's a faculty member. So you'll have sort of three layers of advising, Honors College, whatever college you're in, and then that faculty mentor within your program. But you'll be able to first meet with our advisors during new student orientation, and that's going to be really where you start to transition into MSU and register for your courses. As I mentioned, we have a number of high impact experiences. Um, these are things that I would say our Honors College students do at a rate that's a little bit higher than the general MSU population. We think that they're very important. And if you look at our scholarships for current students, which I'll, I'll touch on later, um, we have a lot of money to support you in doing all three of these things. So education abroad to start, MSU has a top 10 program in the country. We can send you to over 275 unique education abroad programs across 60 countries. We have so many opportunities, whether it's going for a couple of weeks or a month or even a half of a semester or a year. If you're thinking of uh, pursuing a foreign language, this is a great way to further your education. We have a great opportunity for you to get involved even before classes start in our community. We call that HC Impact. You'll see the picture here on the slide. Um, we have a number of service organizations. There you go. I see Sam, the HC Impact shirt. Got to love the, uh, the pride there. Um, but we have many opportunities for you to volunteer throughout your time. We do not have a service requirement in the Honors College. That's worth noting. And then lastly, research uh, is probably one of the most important things that you'll do at MSU. Uh, our faculty love to work with Honors College students. They work very closely with Honors College students really from the first week that you are on campus here at Michigan State. So we have a few different ways for you to get involved. Honors research seminars are among the smallest courses on our campus, typically between five and 15 students at most, and they range on a whole variety of topics each semester. You can take those in your first or second year as an Honors College student. And then we also have what's called a professorial assistantship, which is a research assistantship that uh, we give to a select number of incoming students. And that's uh, a basically a paid research internship that you'll do for two years and will pair you with a faculty member in an area of interest over the summer before you arrive at Michigan State. So you'll have a guaranteed two years of paid research with faculty on our campus, which is very, very exciting. We do have a great community on our campus. Um, there are eight residence halls that have an honors floor or wing. Honors housing is optional, but we do give you that, that chance to be a part of that community in that way. We have a number of student organizations as well, which I've mentioned just a few. Honors Times Two is one of our service organizations. They help mentor elementary school students in math. Our mental health collaborative is, I would say, very, very important to us and, and something where a lot of our students will come and relax uh, Mosaic is our multicultural organization. We have a first year council and a whole host of other social events that we'll do throughout the year. We have a picnic, a ball, uh, many speakers and faculty chats throughout the year. So a lot to get involved in in the Honors College. Now at this point, you might be wondering uh, what our students do after they graduate from the Honors College. You'll see our stole here, which is uh, what you get in addition to being notated on your transcript when you graduate from the Honors College. So this data is pre-pandemic. This is our 2019 graduates. Uh, and we asked them what their plans were after they graduated about six months out. And we, what we found is just under half will pursue graduate school. You can see on this slide, just a few of the very prestigious institutions that our students will choose to attend. Uh, many have funded offers. About 70% of our students that go to graduate school have some funding, whether it be in a master's or PhD program. Uh, and if you choose to go directly into the workforce, we have a pretty high placement rate as well. So we're at 96%. Again, you can see just a few of the employers mentioned here on the slide. So either way, 
Uh, we do a great job. Our students are very well prepared when they graduate from MSU. So whatever your path is, whatever you wanna do after leaving campus uh, in that four years, uh, we're, we're gonna be ready for you and, and here to support you all the way through. We do have a number of scholarships and merit aid opportunities. I know for many of you where cost is a factor in your college decision, this is an important slide. So on the left-hand side, you'll see a few of our incoming freshman scholarships. We have merit aid awards for both in-state and out-of-state students in addition to the PA. So these are limited awards. They go to, a, I would say, a pretty sizable, but less than half, certainly, uh, when you talk about the percentage of the incoming class. But um, these are awards that you would earn based on your academic profile. Um, ADS, or the Alumni Distinguished Scholarship Competition, is where you would compete for a full ride. Um, last year, our students competed in late January, early February. It'll be the same next year in early 2022. So we'll have to update this, but there are about 120 scholarships awarded across those two weekends. And the ADS scholarship, which is our full ride, is awarded to about the top 15 candidates. Each year you can apply for scholarships through the MSU scholarship database. And that will be sort of renewable awards sometimes, but also one-time awards to support things like education abroad and, and research. Um, you can apply each spring that you're a current student in the Honors College. So even in your first year, you can go in that, that spring semester and, and fill out one of our applications. So in terms of next steps, um, the application to apply to MSU if you're a senior this year will open in just a few days. Uh, August 1st is the day that we mark on our calendars every year for when the application is available. You can apply on Common App, you can apply on MSU's website or the Coalition app. Once you're admitted to the university, you will automatically be considered for the Honors College. So we ask that you give us about six to eight weeks to review your application after you've been admitted. Um, if you're invited to the Honors College, you'll be able to accept that invitation at any time before May 1st. And as a note, uh, test scores are not required for consideration. So on the MSU application, you'll be asked whether or not you wanna submit test scores. That's totally up to you. But for more information, please do visit our high school admissions page. You may be invited to participate in the Academic Scholars Program, which is a pathway program into the Honors College. Uh, it's about 200 students that join us each fall as part of that program. And if you're not invited to the Honors College or you're not invited to ASP, that doesn't mean that you can't join us in the Honors College. Um, after your first semester at MSU, we will look at all of those first year students based on how well you've done in that first semester, nothing else. So we're going to look at how well you've done in that first semester and we'll invite more or less the top 10% of each college to join us in January. So uh, if you have any questions, about the Honors College after today, please do reach out to us. Honors at msu.edu is our main email inbox. Again, my name is Andrew Abad. I serve as our Assistant Director of Admissions. Christine Choi is our Admissions Associate and Dr. Bess German is our Assistant Dean. Three of us comprise our Honors College Admissions team. So any one of us can answer questions. We're all happy to meet with you and chat with you uh, as needed. But at this point, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to invite all of our students. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight them so that you can see them all at once. And I will go ahead and let Sam go ahead and start. If you want to do a quick introduction, uh, name, where you're from, what you study at MSU, and then we'll get started with the questions. Hey everybody, my name is Sam. I'm a second year student at Michigan State. I'm majoring in psychology with minors in mathematics, cognitive science, and social science data analytics. And I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I'll popcorn it to Hannah. Um, hi, my name's Hannah. Um, I'm a second year. Well, I'm going into my third year, actually. Um, and I have majors in chemistry and political science at the moment. Um, I'm from Grand Rapids, so pretty close, but yeah, and then I am on my phone, so I literally can't see who else is in here, but, oh wait, Ola, yeah, I think Ola's in here. Yeah, hi, um, my name is Ola, I am a rising junior, um, I'm majoring in human biology with a minor in sociology, and I am from Toronto, Canada. So let me just say that normally we do not have as perfect of a panel as we have today, where we have an in-state student, an out-of-state student, and an international student all on the call at the same time. Uh, I think we've covered all of our bases here today, so I'm happy to, to see that as the case. Um, I'll go ahead and just get started with a question for each of you, and, and maybe we'll start with Hannah and then we'll pass it 
Um, I want to talk just a little bit about sort of how you're able to balance multiple interests, right? So a lot of you are involved in different things. You're involved in sometimes different things academically at the university. Um, and I think a lot of times when we talk about high achieving students, you have to learn to manage your time well in high school. Um, but a lot of folks are really anxious about this, right? When you get to college, how does it look? And, and I think when we talk about the honors college, right? This is an important thing to, to discuss because there's a lot of hesitancy about, well, if I'm in the honors college, will it be harder? So maybe you can touch on those things. Uh, I'd love to hear from each of you about this. Yeah, so I'll talk first a little bit about that. Like I walked into college with just a chemistry degree. It was, I was just gonna go for a chem BS and that in and of itself was a pretty rigorous program. Um, I'd say the honors college, if anything, like I was take, I think I took, I think I have six honors experiences already and I haven't done any for this year at all. So those were all pretty much freshman year that I got done. Um, so I took a decent amount of honors classes freshman year and I definitely had plenty of time. Like I remember when I walked into college, I just wanted someone to say like, am I going to be studying until 12 every night? Like, is that what it's going to be like? Cause no one would really tell me. And I can honestly say, no, I, I was a hard STEM major in the honors college. And that was not the case. Um, it's rigorous. It's challenging, but it's enjoyable. You meet great peers. You have time to do your work and explore different interests. Um, yeah, that's what I'd say about that. I definitely think you, there's this idea that the Honors College will, you know, make you scramble to get everything done and really handle your classes. But in my personal experience, it's, it's a bit of an illusion, you know, because yes, you have access to all of these wonderful classes, you know, like you can take honors courses, you can take honors sections of courses, but when it comes down to it, the nice thing about those classes is that you can search for honors courses that are going to be just as hard as you want them to be. I mean, in a lot of classes, to meet your honors requirements too, you can do something called an honors option where you just add a bit work, uh, add a bit of extra work on um, in a way that, you know, really drives you um, about something that you're passionate about. And it, those can be easier to meet requirements. And so I think it can, it can be very easy to get an honors college degree if you want to. You'll definitely have to push yourself at times, but I mean, most students in the honor co honors college want to push themselves. And if you want to push yourself a ton, I mean, you can take honors linear algebra or something like that. The, those classes will, I mean, I, I took a few classes like that my first semester and I, it, it was tough, you know, so it, it comes down to what you're looking for. Um, I would definitely say that the Honors College has um, acted as a guide. Um, when I came into MSU, I was um, just human bio, but um, through the Honors College, um, they have certain requirements that actually um, people in the college can actually have um, a way of taking a more in depth or specific class. So for example, um, one of the requirements to graduate um, MSU in general is like ISS and IH requirements, which are kind of like humanities and social science classes, kind of an emerge. But within the honors college, um, they make the requirements a little bit better that you get to take in depth, like sociology classes, anthropology classes. And um, through that, I was actually able to pick up my minor and then also be able to get honors options through that. So I would definitely say that the honors college is definitely helped me um, pick up more classes and even like my minor and a, a way as a guide through um, throughout college and just making it easier um, through there. Yeah, I think all of that makes great sense to me. And, and I think each of you represent a great example of how you were able to put different things together, right? I think, um, you know, obviously you work very closely with advisors, but um, I think the more that you sort of acclimate yourself to the environment, right? You find different things and you, you're taken in different directions, which I think is very cool. Um, I wanna talk just a little bit about being involved because I think that's really uh, something that 
our students are, or something that sets our students apart from maybe um, the rest of the MSU population. And I think a lot of times there's this question of, if I'm in the honors college, can I still do X, right? Whether it's be an athlete or be in student government or go abroad or do these things that you might think would take a lot of time. So can you talk just a little bit about how you've managed the academic versus the social versus the you know, professional development, you know, all of those different areas sort of at once. And, and you know, if you felt overwhelmed, you can certainly say so, but just talking about how you've been able to work on this. Maybe Ola, you can go first and then we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, for sure. So um, through the Honors College, I, I think a lot of people have this kind of assumption that when you're in the Honors College, you're going to spend hours and hours a day studying, you're not going to be able to go out. And I think that's actually quite the opposite. I think the Honors College actually, actually helps give you a guide and making it smoother so that you can actually help prepare yourself or maybe be involved in different things. So one example would be um, selection of classes, um, being able to select classes classes first. When you're in the honors college, you actually get to select your classes first, which actually helps um, help you navigate through your schedule and let you know if you have time to do other things. Um, for myself, um, I'm involved in like a couple extracurriculars on campus. My main involvement would have to be with the MSU women's basketball team. Um, I work as a student manager there and I can tell you that is a very time consuming um, job, but I really, really do enjoy it. And I, I spend about 20 hours a week. I even remember my first, I did it my first semester at MSU. And I, a, a lot of people were thinking I was crazy because like, oh, I haven't even navigated through college and everything. But um, the Honors College definitely helped me picking out my classes and helped me navigate that way I can balance both and be able to do both as much as I can. Um, again, there's so many different clubs that you get to meet people. And even with the Honors College and all the clubs that they have, whether it's first generation, HC Impact, you'll be able to also have your social life and actually be able to engage with other people who are going through the same thing and then also getting help. So um, I think it was actually really, really good. Everything tied in together um, just through the help of the staff, um, people around you, and then the Honor College in general, for sure. I'd say the great thing about balancing, you know, social, academic, and professional pursuits in the Honors College is that a lot of the time you don't even really have to try to, it kind of just ends up happening because they naturally overlap. So um, as you saw from my shirt earlier, I ended up participating in HC Impact my, well, right before my first semester and then um, in the courses associated with it my first semester. And I mean, that HC Impact is an experience that is academic, social and professional. You know, you make connections and you learn and you meet all of these people with interesting ideas and backgrounds who are kind and you know want to learn about you and that's the great thing about the honors college you, you're never just going to be learning the involvement doesn't just come down to that it's going to be all of those things no matter what Yeah, I mean, just to wrap up on that question, I, I'm going to talk about HC Impact too, because um, I did that, I guess, like two summers ago at the end, right before my freshman year. Um, and the people I met there are some of my best friends that I have now, like literally, like, I know that sounds super cliche, but it's super true. Um, and I feel like we shouldn't pose a question like either or, like either academics and honors college or like a social life, like, um, uh, the Honors College has contributed greatly to my social life and, and just, I mean, I've talked about this before in a different panel, but like, I remember when I came to college, I was really scared about being just like too nerdy or like not having any fun. And I didn't want to do like the honors housing because I was like, oh, I'm not going to have any fun. But that is so not true at all. I kind of wish I had done honors housing. Um, it doesn't have to be either or is basically what I'm trying to say. And um, um, you can strike a really great balance and you can you can find friends within the Honors College. And, and if you, I don't remember when the application like process for the Honors College impact is supposed to be, but if, if you haven't applied and you can, or if you have applied, like it's the most amazing program ever and I highly recommend it. 
So Hannah, that's a great transition because again, the MSU application is going to open uh, in just a few days. We're recording this at the end of July. So uh, August 1st, it'll open and then students can apply all through the fall. You know, we really recommend that students get their applications done as soon as possible. November 1st is MSU's big scholarship deadline. So uh, we're really hoping to see a lot of applications come in in August and September. But we have just a few minutes left. Again, if you have questions, please go ahead and filter them through the chat. Um, I have just one more question myself for, for each of the three of you. And maybe we'll start with Sam this time as we're sort of bouncing around. Um, and maybe just talk about you know, making the decision to choose MSU. Again, I think we have a really nicely constructed panel in that we have an in-state student, an out-of-state student, an international student, you know, differing levels of maybe familiarity with MSU and um, hopefully, you know, he had a chance to visit and, and talk to us a little bit. I know um, I've talked with Sam, I, you know, personally as we went through the process. So, um, you know, if you can each talk about maybe what were the factors that came into play and uh, how did you eventually make that decision? So for me, at Michigan State, everything fell into place. I mean, Michigan State had everything in a way. And so I didn't even have to worry about what I wanted because I knew all the boxes were checked off. It's a school that's, you know, near a city, but has a gorgeous campus and a lot of green space. Um, it's a massive school, but through being in the Honors College, you get that kind of small school experience because you're going to have courses with the same students and you can be in clubs with the same students over and over again to, you know, find a cohort of individuals that you're very close with. And then on top of that, I mean, Michigan State just, it will set you up for success. You know, there are courses that can be very rigorous. However, you know, you can find courses suited to your learning style and definitely don't need to overwhelm yourself if you don't want to. Um, and I mean, I can't blame people who would want to overwhelm themselves. And then finally, undergraduate research opportunities at Michigan State were a big, uh, that, that was the icing on top of the cake for me. Um, just knowing that I could come in as a freshman and participate in research, it, So a lot of people want to go to, you know, Ivy's schools with a lot of prestige, but the learning experience and the hands-on learning that you will get at Michigan State, you will not find at all universities is the simple truth. And that's really what sold me. Um, I can talk next. So for me, it was a little bit less of a clear cut decision. So I'm, I'm the in-state student and I applied to a couple of different schools that are like polar opposite. I applied to Oberlin, which is this tiny, tiny, tiny liberal arts school in Ohio. I applied to Case Western, which is, I mean, has a great science program and math program. So when I was chemistry, just chemistry, I was really interested in going there. Um, and then I applied to U of M and MSU. So I uh, did not get into Case Western, unfortunately. Um, I did get into U of M and Oberlin. Um, so then I was sitting here with three great schools, and obviously MSU, um, but I was sitting here with three great schools. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, I, I had some financial restrictions, so I had to, I had to unfortunately take Oberlin off the table. Um, but like, I don't know how to explain this other than like, I could have really gone wherever I wanted to go, but MSU was the best of both worlds. Like you look at U of M and you look at Oberlin and they're like polar opposites. And MSU had rigorous academics. It had that big school, but you get all the benefits of going to a big school. You get, you know, big sports. If you're interested in that, you have massive uh, opportunities to do um, any research you want like hundreds and hundreds of clubs um, that you could join. So you get that part of like maybe that U of M would offer, but then you also get that small school vibe that um, Sam was talking about where with the honors college, if you are in the honors college, or if you even just join a club, you know, if you belong to some sub group within MSU, you can get that smaller school feel. And for me, that's why MSU was the perfect fit um, because it really put together these two 
uh, factors that I was really interested in about both schools that were literally like polar opposite and somehow MSU managed to squish it into one school, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, that's why I ended up going to MSU. Um, yeah, highly recommend. Um, so I am the international student and when it came to picking a school, um, it was it was actually really easy um, to pick MSU. Um, I applied to so many different schools across the country because I just thought, why not? Like I dipped my hands into like some Ivy League, some different other types of schools um, across the country, but MSU really stood out for me. Um, simply, it was really the simple factor because of when I would speak to Dr. Best German. Um, when I was navigating, um, trying to go into the Honors College and just learning more about MSU, she had no problem at all wanting to speak to me wanting to um, set up time for me. Um, I remember I would always speak to her assistant and her assistant would know me by her voice and she would know that I was calling Dr. German, but she was always open to speak to me. And I knew from that point that this is the school I wanna go to just because not any other school was willing and this open to just wanting to speak to me and tell me more about the school and everything. Um, MSU has so many different things you can do. Um, there are so many clubs, so many organizations to choose from, which I think is so amazing that even though you may feel lost, there is a group of people, there is a group, there is an organization out there for you that will definitely um, help you with your interests and even help you even dive into more even new things. Uh, MSU is just, even with the Honors College, I think they have such amazing courses, such amazing profs and people. Um, people are so open and kind. And I thought MSU, like just the experience that I've been having, even through virtually, um, has been just so great. And I really recommend that people go here. Um, please don't be like, don't go for the flashy school. Sometimes people think flashiness is um, what they're looking for. Go for where people are gonna help you um, develop professionally, personally, academically. And I know Michigan State has definitely helped me with that. And that's a great segue, Ola, to, to closing because I think um, you know the best piece of advice that I can give anybody watching this or our folks on the call today is, keep in touch with us, right? Visit us, ask questions, give us a call, uh, whether it's Dr. German or myself or Christine, uh, we're all here to help you. We're all here to help you navigate that process to learn more about our program and, and really to decide if MSU is, is the best fit. Um, so I'll go ahead and just uh, reiterate our email address. It's honors at msu.edu. Um, feel free to go and take a look at our website, but we hope to see all of your applications come in very soon and uh, hopefully you'll get good news from the Honors College later this fall. But I wanna thank each of our students, Hannah, Sam, Ola, thank you all so much for taking the time this afternoon. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see your faces. I know as we're transitioning back to campus, I'll, I'll see much more of you soon, but um, very happy to interact with you today and uh, wishing everybody here a great weekend. So uh, thanks again and go green.